These are the computers of a massive scam call center, and I'm going to expose them, ruin their scam, and destroy their computers with malware. Before I freak these scammers out and destroy their entire office, let's understand exactly how their scam operates. This group will make hundreds of thousands of calls each day to people living in the United States. And if you answer, they'll pretend to be Amazon. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, sir. My name is Ronald Park from Amazon. How are you doing today? Well, uh, I might be disturbing you. I'm sorry about that. But right now my call is recording about some packages, which is going to be shifted tomorrow under name. Did you receive any information about the package? The people they are calling haven't made any such purchase, but it's just one part of a multi-stage scam that they'll try to run on whoever picks up. And because this scam call center is making so many calls, the majority of people who receive them will either simply hang up. Hello. Hi, this is Ronald Parr from Amazon. How are you doing today, sir? Or call the scammers out. Hello. Yeah, hi, this is Wayne Adams calling you from Amazon. How are you? You're not Amazon. You're a scammer. Then who? Oh, oh, I am? You mother why, why you say that? You want me to f your mom? Make you squeal like a pig? You mother yeah, right, you son of a bitch. You bastard. Oh, you son of cry. a bitch. You mother cry. You son of a bitch. Don't cry. It's okay. God damn mother Go cry to your God manager and you scam me. Suck my Suck my oh. Suck my Hello? Hi, this is Alvin calling you from Amazon, sir. Who's this? Amazon customer service. There was a purchase made of Apple MacBook Pro and Apple AirPods, sir. I didn't buy any apples. I don't eat apples. What the f***? No, you it's talking a about a cocksucker. Yeah, dog, it's a left you know? Huh? Just go look at the middle and f*** yourself. Hi, this is Wayne Adams calling you from Amazon customer service. How are you doing today? Well, what the f*** you doing, buddy? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you're actually calling the police department in the cross of cons. That's probably not very smart. Sometimes people will believe some of what the scammers say, and get concerned that there really was a package ordered under their name. There's an order place under their name, which was a uh, shoes and a laptop. I didn't order a shoes or a laptop, huh? The scammers will claim that the victim's Amazon account has been accessed by multiple people, and that it's been hacked. So when I checked it, the person who brought this item under your credentials did not access with your Prime account to buy this product. They used the cash account, which is a business account, to purchase this item. These scammers won't just claim your Amazon account has been hacked, but that your identity has also been stolen. So who, who was the person that did this? Okay, uh, right now th we don't know he or she is misusing your information, but I already reported to the fraud team to investigate this information because we suspect that this is a case of identity theft. Right now you're saying that you do not have any business account under your name, right? You didn't create this account, right? I didn't create it. The only account I have is my, my normal Prime account. That's it. Because uh, here, from last two weeks, this account were opened up under your name, which is a business account. The internet server was accessed from multiple devices. Uh, it shows from computer, laptop, cell phone, and iPad from last two weeks. With the variant of the scam that this specific call center is running, they'll not only pretend to be Amazon, but the United States Federal Trade Commission and U.S. Treasury. They'll say that because there has been identity theft, the FTC will need to get involved. Before you lose any kind of more information, I'll be just transferring your call to the FTC. Uh, this is a Federal Trade Commission. They are the only one who can help you to resolve your identity as well as help you to cancel a pre-authorized order and a transaction. Okay, sir? Thank you for calling the Federal Trade Commission. Please stay on the line till the time next representative officer accepts your call. Your call is important to us. Please stay on the line. Thank you for holding the line. Your call has been transferred to the Federal Trade Commission. This is Officer Julie Brill with the badge ID number 775101. May I know who I'm speaking with? Okay, Mr. Cross, before we proceed further, let me tell you that the call that we have been connected to is being federally monitored for quality and security purpose. I hope you are you understand. Okay, Mr. Cross, over here we have got an email from the Amazon representative along with fraud charges that there have been some purchases made into your Amazon account that you have no knowledge of it. So, Mr. Cross, do you have any suspect that there is any, uh, anyone that who can have access to your Amazon account? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, over here, they have also stated that maybe some of your identity might have been compromised. Well, then claim that there's been bank accounts opened under the victim's name. There are like some uh, bank accounts and credit cards that will open uh, multiple under your uh, credentials, okay? If we find anything which is linked with your name, so we will oh, yeah. notify you and investigate regarding that matter. Or else, if we don't find anything suspicious, we will just rectify the case and the charges that was filed against you from the Amazon company, okay? Okay. Have you ever even had a credit card? That's where that money.
34th Street address came from Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. they, they put my name, my address down. Yeah, the title your bike. Oh, it's called Daryl. Called Daryl right now. Okay, Mr. Cross, after we did some background check and we can see that your information was hacked from New York. And from there, your, your information was circulated throughout the United States. These scammers use fear tactics by saying that there's an arrest warrant against the victim for money laundering and theft. They'll also tell their victims that all their bank accounts are going to be frozen and their social security numbers suspended. The scammers will then threaten the victims with jail time, having their SSN and name blacklisted, and their credit score going to zero. Conveniently, they'll also tell their victims that hiring a lawyer to fight this case would be too expensive. Instead, to resolve the bogus case without involving the law, they can do something called ADR or alternate dispute resolution. What this actually means is getting the victim to send money to the scammers, either through Bitcoin or a wire transfer. The scammers will say that the victims need to send all the money in their bank account so the government can safeguard their funds against foreign hackers who don't actually exist. First of all, I have sent you a copy of your non-prosecution plea argument, all right, and the other directive. I have sent you in uh, your cell phone because right now the email, there will be no correspondence on your email if we are not sure if it's been compromised or not. And if the victim has under $15,000 in their bank account, these scammers will instruct them to go to their bank and withdraw cash. Next, they'll tell their victims to go to the nearest Bitcoin ATM. So basically, in Nicholasville, I just see uh, there is a kiosk affiliated with the Department of Treasury. So wait, you're saying I still need to go to the Treasury to open up the box so that I can put the cash in there? By using a Bitcoin ATM, these scammers can easily receive large amounts of money electronically. Once the victims arrive at one of these ATMs, they're told to insert the cash into the machine and scan a QR code. The QR code is actually the scammer's Bitcoin wallet address, and once they've scanned it and inserted the cash, their money is instantly transferred to the scammers in India. On the other hand, for people who have more money in their bank account, the scammers will tell their victims to initiate an international wire transfer to the scammer's bank account for their entire balance. And even though 99% of the time the scammers fail to convince anyone of their bogus story, because these scammers steal such huge amounts of money, only one person has to fall for it for them to make a large profit. And whenever I do see these scammers getting close to scamming somebody, I always make sure to intervene before they can steal any money. Right now, right, there is no appointment, a physical appointment. The only thing was possible to drive to the Lexington or to the Treasury establishment and uh, we will schedule an appointment. But since this past afternoon, the accounting, they tried to uh, schedule the appointment, but there was no officer available at this point. The alternative option which they have provided uh, is to visiting a kiosk affiliated with the Department of Treasury and registering an account by using all of your details. The amount which your C has or you have withdrawn, it will be deposited in that account. Because according to her financial asset, the evaluation C has, Hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just, I'm calling you very importantly to let you know that the people you were just talking to are scammers. The person that you were talking to claiming to be from the U.S. Treasury, he's a scammer from India. And what he's trying to do is get you to withdraw cash, put it into something called a Bitcoin ATM. And if you put it into that ATM and scan a code that he'll give you, your money will be gone and sent to an Indian scammer. It's a scam. Wait, who are you? Yeah, so I investigate uh, international phone fraud, uh, so I can actually hear oh, the conversations shit. that are going on uh, with this scammer. <laughs> and I I was going to intervene earlier, but I didn't want to make him suspicious, so I had to intervene right now. If you want to get more information, just look up FTC impersonation scam. So I, I just hung, I hung you guys up uh, forcefully. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you. Because of the calls I've made to victims, I've probably cost the center a decent bit in scam profits, and they don't even know it. When I wasn't calling victims, many times I would screw with their operation without revealing myself. So I'll go ahead and forward this case to the Federal Trade Commission, okay? So that you okay, can have a word you. with them. Uh, tell them that you did not sign up for this Amazon account and you are not banking with any of this bank, okay? So that they will go ahead okay. and secure your personal information as well as they will shut down the fake Amazon account, all right? All right. So I want you to stay connected with me for a couple of seconds. Let me connect this call to the Federal Trade Commission, okay? Okay. All right. What the f Hello? Hello? Oh, wow. I can't understand a goddamn thing you're saying. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Robert? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Robert, your call has been transferred to me.
I am Officer Judy Bill. I am over this. Hello? Hello, hi, this is Eric calling from Amazon Customer Service. How are you doing today? But trolling these scammers aside, now that we know how their scam works, who are the scammers behind this operation? Well, when I initially got access to this group of scammers, the first thing I did was download all the files from the 16 or so computers I managed to compromise. Most of the files I found on these computers were things like motivational quotes, notes on previous victims, and scam scripts. Not exactly telling as to who these scammers are or where they are located. However, there was one computer that had some interesting information on it, the supervisor PC. Unlike all the other computers in the office, which were used to take calls, the person on this computer was responsible for managing the scammer's phone system, as well as collecting information about victims that were close to being scammed. The files I found on his computer were much more promising, specifically two spreadsheets, one titled Attendance 8th August, and the other May Salary. Looking at the attendance file, we can see some of the real names of the scammers working in this building, and more specifically, the agents, whose job it was to take the calls, and the closers, who actually finished the job. On the salary file, we can see how much these scammers get paid. The employees of this call center get paid anywhere from 1k to 30,000 rupees per month, with the closers being the ones paid the most. Okay, so we know how much these guys are getting paid and some of their real names, but where is this scam call center located? Doing an IP address lookup of several of the IP addresses that this call center had brings us to somewhere in Chandigarh, a city in Punjab, India. However, just a city is far too general. If we try to put the latitude and longitude from the IP lookup, it brings us to a field in the middle of nowhere, so not really useful. So how do we get their location? Well, this call center has Wi-Fi in and outside of the building. By using the name of the wireless networks, as well as their strengths relative to the scammer's computers, and overlaying all the networks around them, we can precisely determine where the office is. Which brings us to this building right here. 8B, Phase 8B of Sector 74 of Mohali, Punjab. When I looked at the businesses operating in the building, there was only one business on Google Maps that was listed as operating there, called the Mafia Empire. When I went to their website, the only thing there was a park domain page. I can't say if these scammers have anything to do with it, but it's certainly odd considering that an entire floor of the building is dedicated to scamming people. So we know the scam these guys run, the real name of some of the scammers, and the building which they're operating out of. I think it's time we confront these scammers and destroy all the computers in the office. I've created malware that when activated, shows this seized by the FBI message and plays an extremely loud siren noise, which is certain to freak these guys out. Even better, it turns the volume of the computers to 100%, so we're almost certain to blow some of these guys' eardrums out. Let's call these scammers and ruin their operation. Hello? Hi, this is Alvin calling you from Amazon Customer Service. How are you doing today? Yeah, Alvin, uh, I'm just calling you because I know what you guys are doing in your call center, your scam call center. I know where you guys are. I know who your names are. And I'm going to destroy every computer in your true? call center. Yeah, yeah. So, so just tell me, what are your last words before I destroy every computer in your call center? Can you tell me your last words? What are your last Calm words, bro? Come and do it. Come and do My it. Last word. Come and do you do not it. think? Do you not think I? Yes. Do you not think I can? Do you not think I can, bro? Do you not think I can? Are you challenging me? Because I'll do it, bro. Trust yes, me, I'll I'm do it. I'm challenging you. you okay. Can One. It. You can do two, it. I know. Three. I know. Boom. Yeah, bro. What do you think, bro? What happened, bro? What happened? What happened, bro? Oh my god, you can just <laughs> you can hear in the background every computer is just oh my god. Every computer is just seized by the FBI, dude. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh, they shut okay, they yeah, they're shutting down. They shut everything down. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Every single computer in the call center was seized by the fbi oh yeah they're all they're all gone no nope, they're all gone wow that is amazing that is so funny bro he he was so, he was so sure of himself and then as soon as i actually did it he just shut up that's crazy that's actually crazy wow bro that is crazy yeah they shut the internet off oh my god you just oh my god dude that is
fucking amazing, dude. Ever since I destroyed their entire office with that FBI message, I haven't seen this office trying to scam at all. Hopefully I've halted these scammers operations for at least a little bit. If you like the work I do, consider subscribing and watching another video of mine.